were going to touch base a little bit on making a bar shoe for the journeyman or just a bar shoe in general. There's, we're just going to focus on the welding and the hockey sticking and putting it together. A lot of the time when bar shoes go awry, it's when people try to shape them like an open heel shoe. And a bar shoe is completely different since it's attached. And what happens in one area usually goes diagonally in another area or away from what the hammer and the anvil are doing to it. An open heeled shoe you can open and close pretty much a branch at a time or just narrow it up, but a bar shoe doesn't quite work that way. The, the biggest nasty area of a bar shoe is right here coming into the corner because the branches don't go out the same and then your, your bar shoe gets a little cattywampus. Hockey sticking. Hockey sticking is to upset the material back into the corner. If you do not flatten out the inside web of the branch, it gets narrower and narrower, narrower and it literally does look like a hockey stick. A flat paddle and then the branch is real narrow. The fullering comes down and you hem for the fullering, but people sometimes hem too far and it makes the heel area look too, too narrow. So we want to make sure we upset material in the heel area. And then to weld, you always want to weld, if you're going to use this system, you can weld any way you want, but the left branch over the right branch if you're right-handed, and the right branch over the left branch if you're left-handed, because you'll always be pulling the weld towards you. If you weld with the left branch on the wrong side, being underneath, when you weld and you pull your hammer, which you have a tendency to do, you'll pull the weld apart. So you. And then whenever you're welding, you want to make sure that you dig with your hammer and not hit flat. All that splatter you see along the floor, that is the material you wish you had in your weld. So you don't want to squish your weld out everywhere. So we'll get into upsetting. I've got a piece of material that I've already put the toe bend in, and now we're going to just show how we upset the heels and put everything together. When hockey, hockey sticking the material, you want about, oh, an inch and a half to two inches. I want to keep the branch above parallel to the ground. So I don't want it to be tipped this direction. I want to keep it above parallel so when I hit it, it actually pushes material into this branch. But if I let it get hung over the back side of the horn, it literally rapes it down and it steals material. So whenever I'm hockey sticking, you'll see that I'm constantly pushing with my branch hand pushing it down and keeping it above parallel to the to the the floor that way I I don't tear material about an inch and a half I'm pushing up with my tong hand and I'm hitting the corner I never let that branch get below parallel now I'm going to push down with my tong hands and aim towards the feet my hammer's going to draw in I'm going to come and I'm going to flatten up right here where it puckers. You can see it puckered on the inside edge. Flatten that up. And then redo it again. I'm trying to pull the... Now, I'm going to have gap here and I'm going to make the back end straight. half of my bar. I have thickness right here because I flattened my stock out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just scarf half of it right now. Push with my tongue hand and I'm going to hit just where it comes off the horn. And constantly be wrapping it underneath. Basically I've got half my shoe. 
about the same amount as the previous one. I'm going to keep it above parallel, hitting the corner, and I'm constantly taking my tong hand down. I'm going to hit the back corner, trying to lift it up, aiming towards my shoelaces. I'm going to flatten in this pucker right in here. The same thing, hit in here. The whole time I'm flattening the inside edge. I've got this little curly cue right here. I'm going to leave a gap and I'm going to make a straight line on the back. Now I'll come and scarf it. Hold it on a nice circumference of the horn. I'm going to push with my tongs and right where it comes off the horn. I basically got it together. Wire brush. At this point, you can see the hot branch. I want the left branch over the right branch. Left over right, as I got it in my tongs. No matter how many times I flip it, it'll still be left over right. What I'm going to do is put it together. You can see that that's a classic problem of the, the, the frog tip plates not lining up. That's perfectly normal. It doesn't matter at this point. You, can you see the, the tips not lining up? Okay, I'm gonna just take a heat. It's important. It's important to take a heat and to keep put all your weld together before you actually flux it. This will make sure everything's packed together. All right, I'm gonna have. Can you, is it focusing? No, I got. Daylight, I'm going to hit the back side and offset the tip. Flip it around. I got daylight, I'm hitting the back of that same tip and I'm offsetting the tip. They're a little bit far, so just opening it up. Just opening it up. Can you see right there? I have a gap in the scarf. When I'm welding this side, I don't want the scarf to touch on the opposite side. So I have I have it beveled down. So now when I'm hitting it. I'm hitting the tip, but the anvil isn't sucking the heat out of the opposite side. Then when I flip it over, I can hit this edge down, and the anvil isn't sucking the heat out of the opposing side. All right, we're gonna just get, this is an overall heat. All I'm gonna do is clean it all up, get the oxidation off of it. I got my Iron Mountain flux. Iron Mountain, you shake it up real good before you get it out because sometimes if it travels, it separates. Just cover your seams with the Iron Mountain. Get all four sides. Front, back, top to bottom. When people weld, 
you want to weld the frog plate with everything else. Don't wait until the last few heats because you'll get a seam. I got everything put in there. I'm going to stick it in there flat. Has nothing to do with the forge. The forge, we welded in a gas single one burner valley hot box. It welds fine. Iron Mountain works a little bit better at cooler temperatures, so I'm not going to bring it up to sparking temperature. I'm going to keep it at kind of a gas welding heat. Do not hit it hard. Fast digging blows. Fast digging blows so you don't lose your material that you're trying to put in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to dig with what either the, the toe or the heel of the hammer. I'm going to dig with the toe of the hammer. I'm going to get it to put the seams together, flip it over, put the seams together, and then get the top and the bottom edges. Here we go. Just, I got this seam all put together, flip it over, see it's still hot, the anvil didn't draw any of the material out. Then I'll take the round side of my hammer and weld the frog plate. And then I want to weld the back edges on the diagonal. Alright Cody, can you come over here? When I'm welding the back edges, I want a gap. And I'm using the frog plate to push against the gap. Come over here. I'm using the frog plate and the horn. I'm already forging my frog plate in there. That's heat number one. You can see I, you cannot see any daylight, you can never see any shadow. So now I got my shadows all gone, so I know I've got it welded. Second welding heat. Keep the oxidation off of it. People say, well, it's already welded, why do you need this? It's just nice to keep everything clean. Again, dragging the ends over. Getting all my parts put together. Use the round side of my hammer and get my frog plate all welded up again. And then get my edges welded down here. I'm welding the edges with the hammer and I'm welding the frog plate with the horn. I'm doing two things with one. See you push it in. All right. Here, you, the frog plate's not only the frog plate, but now I start to line up my branches. I'm going to add material right here, pulling with my tongs. All right, so now I put the frog plate, pull with my tongs. You can see I've got pretty well all the material I want to have in the back half. I'm still real thick. I, I'm i superstitious. I Three times the charm. I like three welds per bar shoot. Per weld, put it that way. I'm starting to flatten up my hammer and get a nicer section. Coming out here. First, I'm gonna really make a nice transition in my frog plate. The reason I like a bigger frog plate is the bigger the frog plate, the more I can shape the shoe. The more I can shape the shoe, the more effective I will be at the fit. The bigger the frog plate, the more I can work it in here and in here. I'm working with, see I'm adding material right here. I'm adding material right here. My, my frog's too narrow or my bar's too narrow, then I can come here and I can fuller out some material and make my shoe wider. It's hard to get to the end of the branch. This stops you. So what I like to do is come up here 
I'm working the end of the branch, working the end of the branch, and then you come up here and you finish off the end of the branch right here. Working the end of the branch, working the end of the branch, then you finish off right here. Basically, you can't get into every aspect of bar shoe building, but we tried to hit on two things. Having your branches come in at the same angle as the foot, having a good solid weld, and using your frog plate to shape the back half of the shoe. I mean, everything could be a little bit better, but once you own the basic principles of all of the facets of building a bar shoe, then you can never lose it and you have ownership. So we'll try and hit on more basics in the next video. Don't forget to don't brush off breast cancer. Thanks a lot.